This Saturday, Sean Strickland defends his belt against Drickus Duplessis in Toronto, Canada. Who can't wait. And we are here to go through the predictions on the main card. Starting with Arnold Allen versus Movsar. Evloev. Regardless, that guy is a monster. And who do you have for that fight? Like I said, Evloev is something to reckon with. It's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. I think if it goes to the ground, Arnold Allen might have a problem. Mm. But I think if it stays on its feet, I think if uh, Arnold Allen sticks with a game plan that I'm sure his coaches came up for him, I think Arnold Allen's going to pull out of this with with a TKO. I think the longer we go into it, though, I th- I, th- I think Evloev's going to have a, a better advantage, but... I'm still sticking with Arnold Allen. Arnold Allen's a monster to me. He's got 76% takedown defense, and I think that's yeah. his biggest problem right there is, is probably takedowns from Evloev. But if he can stop those, I think I think he'll be good. I think he'll be good. And this is huge for both of them because – Huge fight. It's going with probably – next is probably a title fight for one of them or at least one step away after this. But yeah. this is a big fight for both of them. Okay. But I got Arnold Allen. All right. Well, I agree with what you're saying. Arnold Allen's takedown defense is good. My I hate problem when you agree with me. Okay. With Arnold Allen. Tell me. I don't think we have seen him fight someone with high level grappling, such as what we see with Movsar. It's gonna be a problem. And in my opinion, Movsar is going to take him down and he's gonna give him a lot of trouble. And he's gonna keep throwing submissions. We saw Movsar go up in his last fight against Diego Lopez. And that was a great fight. It was. You saw Diego Lopez throwing up every submission, and, and Diego Lopez is actually pretty technically sound, I would say. He's pretty underrated right now, um, and he really gave like everything he had, and he just couldn't pull together a submission. Well, I mean, I think if it was any other opponent, he would have pulled off those submissions. That's what I'm saying. He had he, a, He's definitely got heart, but don't forget who Arnold Allen, Allen We've seen Arnold Allen also have heart. Yeah. We've, we've seen him get hurt. Here's my, we've seen him keep going. Yeah, but what I'm saying is I think on the feet, Arnold Allen obviously has the advantage, but I don't think it's as big of an advantage that Mr. Mofsar has on the ground. I 100%. Okay. So with that being said, (laughs) Mofsar is going to get a big win this Saturday, opening up the main card in an entertaining fight for fans, and I can't wait to see it. We'll see it. And we'll I'm gonna go it. with decision. I don't. I don't see him finishing a vet like Allen. Going, yeah. And I, I. I see it going decision. I see him getting good damage on the ground, pound, uh, ground and pound. As I said, the further we get into fight, the more the more it's gonna lean towards Evloev. But I, I think Arnold Allen's gonna clean it up way before that. Hopefully. Oh, one thing. If he comes in with Arnold Allen with a strategy. One thing I do want to say, and we'll see this, I'm sure, is he needs to be careful of Arnold Allen's guillotine. If he goes in for a sloppy takedown. It's done. We could see him trying to wrap up a guillotine. I guarantee we'll see him attempt a guillotine at some point. Well, that's not that. It's like like he said something. What do you mean? I'm sure we can all say it. We can guarantee that he's going to attempt a guillotine. How many times a fight do people attempt guillotines? Arnold Allen? Yeah. Does he attempt one every fight? I don't know. We'll, we'll rewatch all the fights and we'll see. He doesn't. He does it most of the time. I guarantee I, that he's going <laughs> to attempt a guillotine. Trying to fucking take away what I'm saying. Moving on. Arnold Allen, TKO. You got Evloev decision. I don't know who Evloev is, but I've got Movsar decision. Moving on. Chris Curtis versus Mark andre Berrio. Who you got? Why don't you start this one off? You say, okay. All right, I'll start it off. I'll start it off. We're not going to go there right now. I'll start it off. My question for this fight. You have a question, not an answer. It was a question to myself when I was deciding. Was which Chris Curtis are we going to get? Are we going to get technical Chris Curtis where he's standing back, kind of letting the fight come to him, countering, that we've kind of seen in in a couple recent fights? Or are we getting full-on front-pressing 
going full attack mode, Chris Curtis? I think we're going to have the front forward pressing. I think this was a rhetorical question. That, now this is this is getting weird. This was a re- go ahead. Good. I, I think we're going to get the, the the forward pressing Chris Curtis. That's that's. I got it right here in my notes. We're going to have the forward pressing mm. Chris Curtis, the one who KO'd Phil Howes, the one who, one who KO'd F- Phil No Chin Hawes. I'm sorry. Let me just fix that real quick. The one that KO'd Brendan Allen, the one that KO'd Joaquin Buckley. I think that's the one we're going to get. Okay. Um, just one sec. I let you go first, and then you told me to go first. And then you still went first. You need, I didn't even. <laughs> you, you asked a question. I answered the question. Rhetorical. You did not start with that. I said this is a rhetorical question. I don't know, man. They can all see it. <laughs> I said rhetorical. So anyways, <laughs> I think we're also going to get the aggressive Chris <laughs> Curtis. And because of that, I think it's going to do well for him. I think that Chris Curtis is going to knock him out in the second or third round. You have a round. Second or third Okay. I don't have an exact round. I think okay. it's going to be later. <clears throat> I think the first round is going to be more feeling out. Okay. And this is mostly just due to Chris Curtis's experience, and I don't think – I think he has a slight edge there, and, and he's seen more. In the experience, yeah. Definitely more fights. Yeah. <laughs> is the rhetorical over yet? Yes. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I have the same thing. Barry Alts definitely got the technical striking – and he might be a problem for him, but I don't think he has the power behind it. Um, I have this Chris Curtis decision. Easy win. Decision? By decision. Okay. Easy win. I see Chris Curtis cleaning him up. Personally. I don't. I, I do see a forward pressing Chris Curtis coming in, but he might get hit with a hard hook or hard uppercut. That's probably going to make him stand a little back for a, for a little bit, and then he's mm-hmm. going to start playing a little technical. Watch for those incoming fights. Maybe get like a counter here or there. I don't see him laying out Barry Alt though. Okay. All right. I just don't see it. All right. Well, we're in agreement of the winner. We're not in agreement in anything here, sir. That is true. All right, moving on to Neil the Haitian sensation Magni versus Mike Mallet. Haitian sensation. So listen, I want to say something first. I'm sure you do. I have all the respect for Neil Magni, and I really am sad about how his last fight went from that scumbag Ian Gary, and I just think it was unfair to him, and he's dealt with a lot. But I think at the same time, that fight took a lot out of him mentally, just regardless of all the bullshit that Ian Gary did. I think the actual fight, he was just so far behind Ian Gary on the scorecards and damage, and I think that think that that's something he's been thinking about, and he's aging, and he could be looking at that fight as kind of... Am I done here? The finisher. So I think that he's not in a good place mentally. And I don't – the UFC is setting this fight up <clears throat> for Mike Mallett, his hometown. Um, Mike Mallett, you know, he's got great grappling and a lot of subs on his resume and I or on his short resume. So I just see him subbing Neil Magny. Probably the second round. So you got Mike Mallett submission. Mike Mallett second round submission. That's my kind of sad opinion here. Sad. I feel bad you for re- Neil you Magny. You really feel that bad for him? Yeah, wow. I do. I do because wow. that guy's a piece of shit. And what he did to him was unfair. You heard it here. What do you got? I got Mike Mallett submission. I got Mike Mallett submission. Um, I, I do think that... <clears throat> It's a big fight, though, for Mike Mallett. Because so far, we've seen anyone that went through Neil Magny become gain respect, gain massive respect. Yeah. We saw Shafkat beat him, and all of a sudden, Shafkat was noticed as one of the elites. Ian Gary beat him recently. Ian Gary's, we've seen his increase, we've seen his climb to the top mm-hmm. um, as far as fame and stardom and feeling like an elite and looking like an elite yeah. and being treated like an elite. Mm hmm. So I think if Mike Mallon gets through this, I think Neil Magny's that gatekeeper in the in the He's standings. Been. That's just once you beat him, you're looked at a little differently. Yeah, it's a big fight for him for sure. Got Mike Mallon submission. Is there anything we need to worry about though? You think that we're not thinking about? Obviously, any his he can a TKO. You can always worry about a Neil Magny uppercut or side hook coming out of nowhere, and he has nice feints and he's got lengthy arms and 
There's a lot to worry about. I would agree. <laughs> There's nothing not, I'm not trying to I, completely just, not talk yeah. about Neil Magny here, but I think you covered it with Neil Magny. But I think it's me saying that, I mean, Neil Magny being that gatekeeper says a lot about Neil Magny. If you beat Neil Magny, you are in there with Shafkat and you're in there with Ian Gary. This might be the, the last time, though. If he loses again, that might not well, that, really that's hold you're, the that, same yes, weight. Yes, yes, we understand that. <clears throat> all right, all right. We're in agreement again there. Moving on to where I don't think we're in agreement. I'm going to let you start this one. The main event, Sean Strickland versus Drickus Duplessis. The next fight is the main event. Drickus Duplessis versus Sean Strickland. I just said that. Just making sure that we're on the same just page here. That the, the next around. fight is the main fight. Okay. Sean Strickland versus Drickus Duplessis. It's three times now. <laughs> We got a DDP fan here on the table. He's a little upset right now because he already knows what I'm going to say and he knows where Doesn't this conversation is going to go. But I think that if we get the same Sean Strickland that we got for Israel Adesanya, I don't even have to tell you what's going to happen here. He's going to take him all the way to the fifth round. Nothing of Duplessis is going to work. Just like Adesanya. And I know Duplessis is going to bring forward, forward pressure. And if he does, and if Sean Strickland brings the same Adesanya Sean Strickland that we saw, I think we're in for a hell of a fight because I don't know what's going to happen if he's getting pressured. Like, because Adesanya didn't bring that pressure. Okay, so you're predicting- so it's it's, it's gonna. I'm predicting it's going to be a hell of a fight. It, I have Sean Strickland decision, but I could see anything happening here. This is a tough one to predict. I'm not going to sit here and tell you exactly what's going to happen. I'm a huge Sean Strickland fan. Obviously, um, Duplessis is in his head and under his skin. We've seen him on uh, plenty of podcasts. Mm-hmm. Including our boy Theo. Mm-hmm. And it's obvious that he opened up something, or maybe him winning the champion opened up something. Regardless, we don't know how he's going to perform after these brand new emotions that he's probably feeling for the first time in his life. So, your prediction is decision. Sean Strickland, Sean decision. Strickland retains the belt Saturday. Retains the belt in beautiful and legendary fashion. Okay. And people are going to start thinking a little bit differently since they haven't from israel out of sign already about sean strickland okay well but i did say all that other stuff too <laughs> but sure all right <laughs> yes sean strickland decision yes yes we need a final prediction now let's, let's hear about ddp now okay so i completely disagree with a lot yeah. that you said there i think that if we actually see the same strickland that we saw in adesanya that he's definitely going to lose okay he cannot have that same game plan. He has to have a completely different game plan against Duplessis. These are two completely different strikers in the way they go about their fights, in the way they attack. It's way different. That game plan works against Adesanya. That will not work against Duplessis, who's throwing weird overhands, weird hooks. He, he's not going to be du, able... If Duplessis brings what, you're, what you thought Adesanya was going to bring. No, if Duplessis bring what he brought every fight of his career, like so Israel far. Adesanya brought to every single fight of his Adesanya's career, Adesanya's never that fought that way in his life. The way he fought with Sean Strickland, yeah, he Nothing always was fights that way. And yeah, but Sean that, was stepping back, waiting for counters. So Sean was playing the same game. Sean no, was studying. Yeah, he Sean was, was forward the whole time. He was on yeah, his front toes waiting, the whole time. He was waiting and watching, and waiting. And watching. No, he and was as just as defending as better. Something he was hitting. Yeah, I understand, but you're not listening. All right, I usually don't. This is my exact prediction. First round. I think Sean Strickland's going to win the first round, and you're going to be all excited. And I'm going to be like, this is what <laughs> this I said. This isn't about me. <laughs> for sure. Every Sean Strickland fan will be very excited. It's going to be a very, very like good round for him. The first round's going to be more of a feeling out round for both <clears throat> for of them. For plus. Okay. But, but I think Strickland's going to be more of the aggressor in that first round, and it's going to be working. I think after that, Duplessis is going to go and do what Duplessis does, come at him with weird angles. You don't think he's going to open up that way? In the first round? No, I think the first round he's, he's feeling it. Out. I think I think also he's worried about cardio. Um and he's gonna try to save some of that energy for the later rounds. And you know Strickland has a gas tank, so he's gonna he's gonna take it slow that first round and he's gonna realize right away, wait, this isn't working. And he's gonna go back to what Duplessis always does. Weird angles. I can't wait for this. Over fight. the top. I can't wait for this guy to and see. And my what's exact happen. here, let me find my exact <laughs> prediction. Let's not forget Sean Strickland only lost to Alex Pereira and Jared Cannery in his last 10 fights. No problem. Let's no not problem. forget that. No I think problem. we kind of forget about what Sean Strickland's done because of his mouth and because of a lot of other things. No problem. 
Are you ready? My exact prediction? Go ahead. It's going to be in the third round. It's going to be like an overhand, like overhand hook. One of those. Some weird shit that Duplessis finds. Going to rock Strickland in the third round. He's going to go down, ground and pound, TKO finish. Duplessis is your new champion. But many. For example, though, I think Adesanya Duplessis, I think that's that favors Adesanya. But Strickland, I, I don't think it favors Strickland. I just think this, the way he fights is just kind of what well, you'll what I'm saying We're is if I'm right, you'll see what I'm saying on Saturday. No, we will. Yes. May I give Oh, my, you have no idea what you're talking about. It's possible. At all. It's possible. That's the way I'm leaning. That's fine. That's fine. I'm sure some other people are leaning like that too. We'll see. Leave it in the comment section if you are. May I give out my parlay, which by the way hit on the last fight card? If anyone minus to mental tell, cap, but well, I can't predict that he's going to not make weight. Well, I'm just saying what happened. Yes, my four leg parlay turned to a three leg parlay, and it still hit plus four hundred. <laughs> so my parlay definitely fighting after this video. My parlay for this Saturday. What do you got? Leg one, my guy Mosar minus one eighty four money line. Leg two. Mike Mallett, minus 340. And leg three, Drickus Duplessis via KO, plus 250. Because you know if he wins, it's going to be a KO. So you might as well get the plus 250. Three leg parlay, plus 592. Just like it was last week. Sean Strickland by decision. 